you're here. Uh, my name is Kim Nielsen, and it is my great pleasure and honor to introduce Professor Craig Locker. But before I turn the podium over, you're going to have to let me go on and on a little bit. Since arriving at UWGB in 1975, with a newly minted PhD in hand, Dr. Lockhart's impact on the field of history and on this institution has been nothing less than remarkable. Today we gather to celebrate his career, honor his retirement, and savor this lecture, Crossing Borders, Disciplines, Cultures, and Histories. On campus, Lockhart has set a standard of service that few of us in this room will ever meet. Throughout his years at UWGB, he has served on nearly every major campus committee, chaired both history and social change and development, and taught a very, very wide array of courses. His outstanding intellectual contributions have made him an obvious choice for the Founders Award for Excellence in Scholarship, as well as the Ben and Joyce Rosenberg Professorship. In addition, and perhaps more importantly, Professor Lockhart has inspired, has challenged, and encouraged hordes of students. Students who themselves have gone on to have positive impact in Greater Green Bay, throughout the United States, and throughout the world. Lockhart has a truly extraordinary record as a scholar, publishing a series of important books, including just this year two of them, The World and Southeast Asia in World History. A book also called The Dance of Life, Popular Music and Politics in Southeast Asia, Reflections of Change, Social Political Commentary and Criticism in Malaysian Popular Music, and From Kampung to City, A Social History of Kuching, Malaysia, plus 120 articles and book reviews. He has twice served as Fulbright Hayes Professor at the University of Malaya and given numerous guest lectures. But those are the details. Here's the larger picture. Working from this campus in an office filled with piles of papers, <laughs> and I want you to be careful when you go in there, <laughs> Craig Lockhart has crafted a scholarly life that has changed what we think of as the world. As a dynamic leader in the field of world history, he has helped to theorize, articulate, and develop an entirely new field once only Western civilization courses were taught. Now, world history courses are teaching students an entirely new way of imagining the world's relationships, power dynamics, and geography. These millions of students have gone on to become parents, politicians, community leaders, consumers, and voters with a radically different framework of knowledge and reality than previous generations. Craig Lockhart has literally helped to reshape the world. On a personal note, I arrived, some of you may remember, on the UWGB campus 10 years ago. A very junior scholar who did not know what she was doing, and by the way, I was eight months pregnant. I cautiously looked around at my colleagues, some with caution, some with fear, some with confusion. And I'll be honest, if someone had told me then that Craig Lockhart would grow to be one of my dearest and most valued colleagues, I would have laughed them away, I'll be honest. <laughs> However, Craig has grown to be one of my dearest and most valued colleagues. I appreciate him and his kindness greatly. We are fortunate to have him amongst us. And now, crossing borders, disciplines, cultures, and histories. Craig Lockhart. my 15 minutes of fame here. I do want to thank Kim for uh, asking me to make a public presentation as I prepare to retire from actually 40 years as an academic, including 35 years here at UWGB. Take good notes, you students. Uh, my main points will be on the exam. You can also buy the 50-page uh, fully footnoted hard copy complete with a 100-item bibliography from Amazon.com or eBay. 
Kim has resurrected an older tradition of last lectures that flourished here for a few years back in the 1980s and has long been accustomed at some other universities. I think now is a good time to reflect back on my career before they order me to clear out my office, which, as you may suspect, will be a major challenge. I still may be around for a few more years just clearing out my office. And then, of course, as they put me out, I also want to uh, thank at the outset my wife Kathy and my sons Chris and Colin for putting up with my workaholic habits and the ever-growing stacks of papers, journals, and books that colonize several rooms of our house. It isn't just my office, folks. No doubt my colleagues will be shocked, shocked to learn that I have a cluttered den. So unlike my Christine, I call it. <laughs> I'm also grateful to all of my stimulating colleagues over the years in social change and development, in the history program, and in other departments, as well as the helpful office staff in community sciences. These people have provided friendship, as well as support for my teaching, my research, my writing, given its interdisciplinary curriculum, about which more in a moment, its inspiring faculty, its innovative approaches, and talented students. UWGB has been a wonderful place to pursue an academic career. Some of the visiting speakers in uh, SCD's exciting Center for History and Social Change that Harvey K. put together some years ago in the lecture series uh, have noted with admiration that the social change and development faculty and the history faculty here have engaged in a continuing conversation about ideas. It's a conversation that I think keeps many of us energized and on our toes. It makes UWGB a very special place to be. As you might guess, I pondered for several months what I want to say uh, as my academic career as a full-time teacher winds down. Unfortunately, I was unable to hire any of the writers from uh, The Daily Show or Saturday Night Live <laughs> to write this material, which was a bummer. But to compensate, I'll begin with an academic blast of the past. Many years ago, I think it was the late 70s, early 80s, uh, J. Allen Heine, uh, who was a prominent astronomer at Northwestern University and a longtime consultant to the Air Force on UFO sightings, pretty sexy topic, <laughs> shocked his audience and made headlines by using his last lecture to charge that the Air Force had never taken UFO reports seriously and made only superficial investigations. Therefore, he claimed, misleading the public and missing potential scientific insights. I can't speak to the accuracy of Professor Heinick's claim, but in that rebellious spirit, I could use my hour here to reveal the truth about Roswell, Area 51, <laughs> extraterrestrial <laughs> visitations, and even the Bermuda Triangles. But I'm not a UFO believer, sorry. I could proclaim that the moon landings were all a gigantic hoax, as The Onion recently revealed in a shocking interview with Neil Armstrong. <laughs> However, newsflash, The Onion is not actually the nation's newspaper of record. It should be, but it's not. It's not always accurate. I could alarm you with the revelation that the world will end violently in 2012, as predicted in the Mayan calendar and portrayed in a forthcoming disaster film. So, you know, in that light, class examinations, job hunting, mortgage payments, retirement planning, you know, paying off student loans may be the least of our worries. However, most academic experts on the Maya question whether the Mayan calendar really predicted the absolute end. Despite a lot of alarmist internet stories, there's something like 600,000 websites devoted to worrying about the end of the world in 2012, which tells you something about this country, I think. Uh, despite this, and these are stories that have frightened a lot of gullible people, uh, I, even if the Packers tank this season and next, I don't think the world's going to end in 2012. <laughs> I hope not. I still have piles of books that I want to read before doomsday. And it may take many years to clear out my office, which I certainly want to do before doomsday. Or I could regale you with my theories about who really killed John Fitzgerald Kennedy. All right, it was Elvis. <laughs> which is why, fearing discovery, he later faked his death and has been living ever since under an assumed name in Sheboygan. <laughs> Remember, you heard it first here. Or I could reveal how the world is controlled by the Illuminati, the Matrix, a big Eastern syndicate, the Trilateral Commission, or killer socialists from hell. But I don't believe that either. Everyone knows it's controlled by Oprah, myself, and the big